from Upper Michigan Source. This is your Friday Night Fever on Demand for October 26th. I'm Mike Ludlum. The high school football playoffs are underway. We start in Division 6, a rematch of earlier in the season as the Westwood Patriots travel to Calumet to take on the Copper Kings. If you remember the first meeting, it was the closest game Calumet had all year, winning by just two points. We pick this up late in the first half. Matt Ogila with the catch, pitches it to Travis Ogila, and that works down to the 30-yard line. But pass interference on the next play. We're scoreless at the half. Third quarter, handoff to Travis Ogila. He's going to break a tackle and go 13 yards for a first down. At the 14-yard line, Brent Locust looking in the end zone for Matt Ojla, and he's going to make a diving catch to put the Copper Kings on the board. Two-point conversion, no good, so 6-0 Calumet. Less than two minutes to go in the game. Patriots on the 26th. Nathan Beckman scrambles and looks and looks and looks, and unfortunately, he finds Travis Ojla with the interception. And the Copper Kings run out the clock. They win this by the score of 6-0. Here's Calumet coach John Crows. I'm speechless right now. The hats off to our defense. What a phenomenal game. Uh, I'll tell you what, Calumet versus Westwood put the two best football games in the UP this season. Uh, it was outstanding football on both sides. Uh, I hate to see a team lose like that. My hat's off to Westwood and their staff. Um, but what a great win for the Copper Kings. Find out tomorrow who we're playing, but hopefully we get a little rematch with Traverse City St. Francis because uh, they took it to us last year. We want a chance at them again. Calumet is 10-0, and, and I would say they have a good chance of facing St. Francis. The Gladiators host Elk Rapids on Saturday. We move to Division 8, where Gwynn looking for revenge against Ishpeming. And the Model Towners uh, in trouble early because the handoff goes to Matt Trawick. And uh-oh, Matt's on the loose. And that's not a good thing if you're the opposition. And Tucker Taylor tried but could not catch him. And that's an 88-yard touchdown and an 8-0 Ishpeming lead. After it gets to be 16-0, Drake Sundberg has trouble with the snap and Tucker Taylor gets the recovery for the black and gold. On the ensuing drive, Austin Forbes looking downfield for Taylor. But Gavin Sundberg says, no, you're a very good player, but you're not catching this one. On the next drive, the Hematites are back to work. Hunter Smith on the jet sweep turns the corner, breaks that tackle, shakes and bakes past two more, oh, and a third. And the next thing you know, he cuts back the other way and yeah, he's gonna make it to the end zone. He's rather shifty. That made it 24, nothing and Ishpeming wins the first round easily, 52 to six. And the Hematites will be home for the next round. Most everybody knew that if they would win. And West Iron County will be the visitor because the White Cons crossed the Mackinac Bridge and defeated Rogers City 28 to 8. We go to eight player football division two. Defending state champion Forrest Park in white against North Central. For the Jets, Brady Eichmeyer up the middle. Brady Eichmeyer could have run all the way to Gwynn at this rate. He 47 yards here, and the Jets are on the board 6-0. Eichmeyer again. Oh, my goodness. Well, he has somebody in pursuit this time, but he will go 87 yards as long as he keeps his balance. He did. 12-0. Jets again. They missed the two-point conversion. Then Forest Park would get to work. Tommy Peltima pounds his way through, and the Trojans are on the board. We go to the second half now. North Central behind, but not after this. Eichmeyer to Noah Gorzinski on the deep ball. 24-20 going into the fourth. North Central in the lead. But Forest Park, Peltima, the Tommy Showers in the rain. That's a touchdown. Trojans regain the lead. And Peltima with his fourth touchdown of the game. And the Trojans get the try for another state championship, winning round one. 36 to 24, getting revenge in the process. On the scoreboard, yes, Forest Park was the fourth seed. Rapid River was the third seed and had revenge, beating Engadine 20 to 18. 
Tyler Sundling, a 57-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. Griffin Flaff, an interception on the game's final play in the end zone. So the Rockets are into round two. Cedarville, in another part of the bracket, goes down to Hillman and claws the Tigers 44-6. And in Division One, eight-player football, Pickford easily over Fife Lake Forest area, 51-0. To college hockey, WCHA season starts for NMU, taking on Bemidji State, no score after one. And in the second, Wildcats are down a man, but Troy Loggins not able to get the shorthanded goal as Henry Johnson makes the stop. Loggins would try to hit Adam Rockwood again. That would not work, but it finished the power play for the Beavers. A few minutes later, Joe Nardi, Mitch Slattery, Daniel Craighead back to Slattery, but Johnson is there. With the save, Nardi's waiting for a rebound. That does not happen. Wildcats get a little bit closer for coach Grant Patoni. Phil Ballou, Loggins, Rockwood, Darian Craighead with a chance. Oh, that's a posty. Nothing but a posty there. After 12 and a half minutes, Ethan Somoza puts a shot on Ate Tolvin in one of his 20 saves on the night. Back the other side. Scramble on the boards. Jarrett Lee will somehow carry him the puck off a Bemidji player, Adam Rockwood, Ryan Black, and the wrister in the top corner. And that beats Johnson at 16.57 to give NMU a 1-0 lead. Denver Pierce and Darian Craighead scored empty net goals in the final minute of the third period, and the Wildcats start the conference schedule with a 3-0 win over Bemidji State, 7 o'clock Saturday night. On the board, the Huskies have five power play goals. Matt Jurasek with 25 saves. Tech downs Wisconsin 6-2. Lake Superior State over Alabama Huntsville 4-3. Not a good night for the Alaska schools. Ferris State 4-0 over Anchorage. And Minnesota State blanks the Nanooks 4-0 as well. Michigan a 3-0 win over St. Lawrence. And the Spartans go on the road and beat Cornell 5-2. And in the battle for college hockey in Ohio, well, at least part of it, Bowling Green led 7-0 before settling for an 8-2 victory over Ohio State. Michigan Tech, NMU rivalry. Let's start with volleyball at the SDC gym. And this is set point in the first set. And Rachel Ping and Olivia Gormley will block Maggie Liebeck. And the Huskies win set one, 25 to 18. We move to the second set, NMU in the lead at this point. And the Huskies are gonna keep the ball in play. Then Lindsay Svoboda sets Leticia Antunes for the kill. Wildcats lead 25-21. So set point for the green and gold. Svoboda, Rachel Braunschweig to Autumn Monsma for the kill. And the Wildcats win set two, 25-21, or even at one. To the third set, Tech up a point, trying to serve for the set. Megan Utlack with the serve. Wildcats set Sarah King, but that ball goes wide, and Tech leads 2-1 to one with a 27-25 win in set three. To the fourth, Mariah Sherman is going to get, well, not the hardest kill of the match, but it was the most effective because that let the Huskies win the match. 25-17, three sets to one. Mariah Sherman had 22 kills. Keen had 17 for NMU. To the volleyball scoreboard, Kelly Walter had 18 kills for Lake Superior State, but Northwood squeaked out with the 3-2 win, 16-14 in the fifth set. Also, Ferris State had a scratch for its life, 3-2 over Saginaw Valley State, 15-9 in the fifth. Meanwhile, the Northern Tech rivalry was also taking place at Sherman Field on senior night for the three Huskies seniors. 20th minute, Grace Shaw will be out of the reach of Gabby Scambati, but she'll track it down. And she'll look around and she says, oh, there's Shaw. Bing, the header, yes, into the far post. Her ninth of the campaign, Huskies have a one nothing lead. 11 minutes later, Grace Shaw moving the ball through midfield. Marissa DeMario was going to end up behind the defense somehow, times the pass correctly, and the left footer is good, and the Huskies have a 2-0 advantage. 90 seconds later, Shaw with the ball again. That would be known as mistake number one. Playing the ball through the defense, Emma Verrett will come out the challenge, but Leah Goldman flicks it home. Huskies take a 3-0 lead into halftime, and they go on to win 3-1 on senior day. 
To the scoreboard on the men's side, Northwood defeated NMU 2-1. The GLIAC men's soccer tournament begins Tuesday, and guess what? Northern has to travel right, by, right back down the Midland to take on the Timberwolves. The GLIAC women's tennis tournament is underway in the Lower Peninsula, and good starts for Michigan Tech and Northwood with four nothing victories. The two winners meet each other on Saturday. Congratulations to a lot of tennis players from Michigan Tech and Lake Superior State on the GLIAC all-conference teams. Ivana Gor Gorgiaski, Jessica Brown of the Huskies, and Alex Alexian Druin of Lake Superior State are on the first team. Just as much congratulations, if not more, to Kevin Kalanick of the Huskies, the coach of the year in the conference. The Lakers and Huskies have two have won a piece on the second team, and on the honorable mention, Tara Harvey and Vicki Quindy. Northern Michigan University is looking into adding a women's hockey team to their athletic program. NMU, the WCHA, College Hockey Incorporated, and the National Hockey League met to discuss the possibility of adding the team. Northern will conduct a feasibility study of adding a D1 women's hockey team. That study includes looking into the health, safety, and medical services for student athletes. It's being funded by the NHL and the WCHA says if the team is added, it's likely they could be added to that group. It's, it's really something that you think about and you, you You'd like to help, you know, you'd like to help move a, a sport and, and um, for one particular gender, you'd like to help move uh, something forward and create opportunities for people. Uh, Northern Michigan already being a member of the WCHA on the men's side, um, it certainly is, is a natural fit. Um, geographically, it works with our league as well and, and the acad academic profile also works really well. Our support doesn't end kind of with just with signing a check over to our consultancy group. We're, we're here for the long haul and uh, you know, we're certainly excited about this. Carr says after the study is concluded, the university will hold a vote on whether or not to add a women's hockey team. Progress could be made about two years after that. First weekend of the high school football playoffs usually coincides with the MHSAA Athletic Directors meeting in Marquette. New Executive Director Mark Ewell talked with a couple dozen ADs and others this morning at the Superior Dome. Many topics were discussed including the declining number of players participating in football and what could happen down the road. Football is really tough right now. You've got the issue of uh, participation numbers, which of course is driving some traditional 11 player football schools to eight player, which of course then creates issues in your eight player divisions. We've gone from one division to two, and as more schools go the eight player out, uh, we're gonna have to seriously look at a, another division of eight player and what would that do then to the 11 player divisions. The, the thing that really creates the issues is regular season scheduling, that with lower numbers, um, schools having to travel further to find games to get their six wins and to get into the playoffs. Um, it's a problem and something that uh, we need to work with our schools to find a solution. 